This is going to be a three series video dedicated for the understanding of the basics of smartphone backlight circuit. Here with me I've got different motherboard from different smartphones and we are going to use them as demonstration for understanding of the backlight circuit. So today being the first part, we are going to dedicate this for the identification of backlight ICs and circuit on a motherboard. I believe it is very useful for every technician to have that some kind of like natural knowledge of identifying where to start from when you have an issue on a certain kind of device. So today we are going to dedicate it for identification of backlight circuit on different smartphones. There are many ways we can identify circuits on smartphone and one of it is by identifying the departments on the motherboard. As you can clearly see from here, this is a Tekino K7 motherboard and you can see it has got these lines that look like boundaries where these electromagnetic field shields are being soldered on. This is not done coincidentally, it is actually done on purpose in order to separate different departments. Here you can see that this is a CPU and memory department with one of the biggest shield. And the next one is the network section. You can clearly identify the network section from this antenna that comes from this department to these towers. And the next part is a department which has two sections. It has got the charging section and it has got the backlight section. If you flip over this motherboard, you shall still find another section which is called a power management department. In this power management department, we have this power ice, we have this LED control ice and other coils to create different kind of voltage that circulates all over the motherboard. These departments help us when you are trying to fix issues so that we get to know where to start from. This is a Tekno Y2 motherboard and you can clearly see it still has the same demarcations for different departments. The network section, uh, the power and memory section, the power management unit, the backlight unit, the Wi-Fi section, the LED section and the output sander. The second method we can use for identifying backlight search on a motherboard is by following the motherboard markings. You see this motherboard has got different writings on them and these writings are not for coincidence. You can clearly see now that the shield that handles all the network section has got what we call RF which stands for radio frequency. Radio frequency in other words it stands for network. Then the second fiber you can see we have these numbers that explain the connections 1 to 20, 20 to 40 and down here you have three letters saying LCD which shows that the LCD fiber connects here. Up here you can see we have camera F which stands for camera forward and you can still see other markings on this motherboard. Then behind here we have different markings and SPK stands for speaker, we have mic which stands for the mouthpiece, we have DP, VBUS, VBUS which stands for the USB positive line, we have DM, these are the middle data lines for the USB and different other markings on a motherboard. So if you are fixing a, a backlight circuit, before you jump over to any conclusion, first identify and read these markings on a the motherboard. They can somehow direct you where to start from. The third method we can use for identifying backlight search on a motherboard is by a screen socket. The way you see humans, how we organize our lives, arranging things according to our preferences, it's the same technique that engineers use when they are doing a PCB layout, which means that most control ICs and control devices are next or nearer to their output and inputs. This means that you will probably have to find backlight circuit near the LCD socket. As you can see here, we have the screen, the screen socket where it connects. When I flip over this motherboard, behind here we find the backlight circuit, where we have the coil, the control ice, the rectifying diode, and other coupling capacitors. So if you are tracing for backlight circuit on a smartphone, the best way or the best place to start from is where the screen connects from. Even on the screen sockets, we usually have a big line 
which transports or where, where current transfers from. If I show you under a microscope, you will see that a backlight line that connects the socket of the screen is a bit bigger than other data lines. This same thing applies to different motherboard. This is a Tekken Y2 motherboard. You can see that this is where the socket, the screen socket docks from, and this is the backlight circuit. This is a China tablet. This is where the screen connects from, and here you can see the backlight and the boost circuit. The same thing applies to different motherboard. This is an ITEL 1503. You can clearly see that the screen socket connects here and the backlight circuit is here. In some devices, backlight circuit is next to the charging section. It is two reasons. Because when the phone is off, at some point, the charging section controls the backlight. That's why you see when you put a charger into your smartphone, even if it's off, the screen lights up. They are sometimes categorized or put together because when the CPU is off, this charging section can control the backlight of the screen. This is a Tecno K7 motherboard and you can still see the same thing. This is where the screen socket connects from and this is the section for the charging and the backlight circuit. The same applies to this motherboard. This is a China high copy Samsung phone. The screen socket connects here and the backlight circuit is behind here. So every time you are trying to fix a backlight search issue in this any smartphone or any device, start identifying components that are next to the screen socket. The third method we can use for identifying backlight search on a, sm on a smartphone devices or motherboard is by identifying protection devices. When I talk about protection devices, I mean fuses, diodes, and MOSFETs. Because backlight uses a lot of voltage, which at some point reaches up to 50 volts, there is always a protection component, that being a fuse. And most probably in all MTK phones, you'll find a white fuse on the backlight circuit. Smartphone fuse come in different sizes and different types, but the most common one are these white resistors. These white resistors act as fuses to protect in case there is a short on the circuit. They also act as current resistors. So in every high voltage department on a smartphone, you're going to find a resistor like this. So this is a charging circuit and you can find resistor on its input. This is a backlight circuit because the input of this backlight circuit comes from the VBAT. The VBAT always has a resistor. So this is another motherboard where you still find a resistor on the input of the battery. You can some point find it on the LED circuit. When I talk about the LED, I'm meaning that flash camera, flashlight, which you use when you're taking pictures or when you're lighting up at night. Because that LED takes a lot of current, you're always going to find a, a resistor. This is a Tecno Y2. On the LED circuit, you have a resistor here. So don't forget that a working resistor is always in continuity mode. This is the first thing you always have to check in case your device does not have a backlight. At some point, it's the first thing to blow up. It rarely blows up, but sometimes it does. This is a tablet and you can still see the same resistor on the input. So if you're tracing for backlight issues, you can still trace for these kind of resistors. Somehow they can drive you to the backlight circuit. The same thing applies to the switching backlight. You still see a resistor here, which acts as a fuse.